Now, this is a comparison. Many people think intelligence and cognition is one and the same. Now, this is purely etymological question. But there is a difference. Intelligence is the power available for this work. Whereas, cognition is what the brain does. For example, I want to drive a car. And in cognition mode, all I think is, yes, there should be a car and there should be petrol in it and the keys and there I can go ahead and drive the car. This is a cognition. Technically speaking, I am developing, thinking, sensing and I am initiating something. I am remembering how a car works. But what is intelligence? I never went to a car driving school. I don't know how to drive a car. So can I learn to drive the car in a day? No. After learning it for six months, I have the intelligence or the power to drive a car. So now you know the difference. Cognition is a technical aspect of thinking. Whereas intelligence is the power available. That means I can think how a car can be driven but I can only drive a car if I have learnt it and when I learnt it I get that intelligence to drive a car carefully. So intelligence is a quality of cognition or perhaps better put this way it is a type of cognition. An intelligent person has cognitive skills that he or she can apply to do different kinds of activities. So now after learning that car for six months, I have that intelligence and I'm using the cognitive things of driving the car, like taking the keys, having the petrol and going on a ride on a long drive. Is there any other word for cognitive? Yes, there are many words like cerebral, mental, intelligent, intellectual, reasoning, reasonable. What is this cognitive method? What is this cognitive approach? Cognition refers to mental activity including thinking, remembering, learning and using the language. When we apply cognitive approach to learning and teaching, that is the best way to success. We focus on the understanding of information and concepts. Yes, I told you earlier, algebra, commerce, economics, all these concepts are understood. Types of cognitive learning. There are three main types of learning classical conditioning, operant conditioning, and observational conditioning. Both classical and operant conditions are forms of associative learning, whereas observational learning is learning by observing others. Let's go into the first part. What is classical conditioning? Classical conditioning is a process we learn to associate events that frequently happen together. As a result of this, we learn to anticipate events. Let us take this example. Ivan Pavlov conducted a study involving dogs. He trained the dogs to associate with the sound of a bell, with the presence of a piece of meat and whenever the dogs heard the sound of the bell then they used to anticipate that meat would be served to them so there you go associate events or anticipating events the dog anticipated something with the sound of the bell operate operant conditioning operant conditioning 
is the learning process by which behaviors are reinforced or punished, thus strengthening or extinguishing a response. The example will tell you and that will give you a in-depth view of what is operant conditioning. Behavior that are followed by consequences that are satisfying to the organism are more likely to be repeated. As I told you, organism here may mean a human being. So if you have done something and that outcome is very happy outcome, you will repeat those things. Suppose you have done something and the outcome is unpleasant, you are likely less to repeat that thing. So there you go, strengthening something which is pleasant, extinguishing something which is unpleasant. The last one, observational learning. Observational learning is through observation. It is through observation that we learn to imitate others. Here, Albert noticed that the children often learn imitating through adults. And he had tested a theory using a famous Bobo doll. And in this experiment, he learned that children would attack the Bobo doll after viewing adults hitting the doll. How many times we have seen small children imitating their father or mother or grandparents. Sometimes they exactly say the words what their parents say. Or they exactly do the things how their parents do. So, observation learning is an apt example of this behavior. So, I thank you all for listening. I hope you had a wonderful time.